this conference, like all conferences, requires a certain amount of fin finances to occur, uh, to be obtained. And uh, we'd, we'd like to shout out some special thanks. Uh, we'd like to thank all of our conference exhibitors and sponsors, especially our conference champions. Fire Engineering, Houston Engineering, and our conference supporters, Dave's Dozing, Shive Hattery, and Wink. Uh, please stop by and visit these, these uh, exhibitors and booths. Uh, these are critical components of keeping our cost at a level that uh, we, all, we all can appreciate. Last night I attended a uh, presentation by Dr. Nancy Rabelai addressing a topic of canned corn chowder and shrimp chowder, or something to that nature, exists concurrently. The answer, I think, was it depends on us. And our effort to try to help make this happen in terms of the us framework is bringing it together under the umbrella of the Iowa Water Conference, urban, ag, stormwater, recreation uses. So please use this as a time to, to communicate with and between groups. Uh, this is something we'll have to solve together, at least we have to address together. That's the, the water, water quality issue. Every year has activities associated with water. I'd like to highlight just a, a, a few of those, not taking much time, but just, just to highlight what's happened. We've, we've had the w, WMA, WMAs of Iowa, Water Management Authorities of Iowa form this year. That's the umbrella to help organize the water management authorities of the state. We've had a variety of new WMAs be formed this year. I think we're looking at 23, maybe one or two in addition to that. Uh, we've had a major water quality boost from the state legislature, and I think our uh, opening, opening honorary will address that uh, more. Uh, the watershed approach, which was a $97 million HUD grant that came to Iowa, is in its second year. We're in the year of implementation of activities now, which have a, should certainly have an impact on both water quality and quantity. The Leopold Center was defunded. However, the uh, Iowa Nutrient Research Center was funded. So, push, not push and shove, but it's, anyway, those, those actions did occur. Uh, still, opportunities to address Iowa water quality. Uh, Bill Northey, who's been an advocate for water quality and water quality funding, is a transition to be confirmed as Undersecretary for Farm Production and Conservation. Those are key highlights with one addition. That is that Dr. Wendy Winterstein, who's been an advocate for water, water quality in Iowa, was selected October 23rd, 2017 to serve as Iowa State University's 16th president. Uh, she assumed the office November 20th and is the first woman to occupy the presidency of Iowa State University. We're, we're not done yet. That's enough? Okay, she's humble too. Hey, please welcome Dr. Winterstein, President Winterstein of Iowa State University for opening comments. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. It's such a pleasure to be here. Uh, I have so many uh, positive memories of the history of this conference, and, and I look at Rick Cruz, and I'm thankful for his leadership. Uh, when he talks about can we have corn and shrimp chowder, uh, I think the answer to that, of course, is yes. I remember years ago now uh, being out at the Neil Smith Wildlife Refuge. Uh, we were welcoming a group from Louisiana that wanted to come up and visit the strip uh, project uh, that was first 
uh, done at the Neil Smith uh, Wildlife Refuge. So it was a great day with those folks from Louisiana to show them some innovative practices that had been researched at Iowa State, funded by the Leopold Center. Uh, we had a wonderful day. So it wasn't just, though, about corn and shrimp. Uh, we had Congressman Neil Smith with us, who really was responsible for the Neil Smith uh, Wildlife Refuge. But he was an advocate for how we manage stormwater runoff and what was necessary to manage water in Iowa. So it's good to remember his leadership as well. So, so we've been working together for a long time, uh, not just in Iowa, but nationally. And we're going to continue uh, to work together. I think uh, Rick's comments about now having uh, Bill Northey as undersecretary at USDA, that's going to be a great advantage for all of us, but again, nationally for so many programs in agriculture, so many programs that are related to soil conservation and water quality, and again, what we do in a collaborative way. Well, uh, at Iowa State University, we are committed uh, to the work that we do in water quality. Uh, we're committed to the partnership that we have with other institutions in this state. Uh, and again, uh, Rick mentioned one of the big successes with the work at the University of Iowa and the HUD uh, grant uh, to further help us. Uh, there are just so many ways uh, that we can move forward. It's clear that no one individual, no one institution uh, is going to be uh, the solution for uh, the challenges that we face in Iowa, in the Upper Mississippi Basin, and of course uh, nationally as we talk about water. I do want to spend a few minutes and just read off the list of some of the important partners in addition to the ones that Rick already mentioned. Um, and those are, uh, again, indicative, I think, of how we work together in Iowa. So Iowa Department of uh, Agriculture and Land Stewardship, of course the Department of Natural Resources, the Iowa Flood Center, uh, Iowa Floodplain and Storm Management Association, Iowa State Extension and Outreach, uh, the Iowa Storm Water Education Partnership, the Leopold Center for Sustainable Agriculture, Luther College, Natural Resources Conservation Service, Trees Forever, the U.S. Geological Survey, and the Iowa Water Science Center, and of course the Iowa Water Center. So as we think about the Iowa Water Center, Iowa State is pleased that we're the home for this important center, this federally backed uh, water resources research uh, institutes that they have around the nation. And again, a big thank you to Rick Cruz for his leadership. Uh, Rick brings an incredible ability and talent to the table to tell great stories, I think, that help us all better understand where we need to be headed and where we've been. So a round of applause for Rick Cruz. And Rick Cruz has a great team, and Melissa Miller and Hannah Bates that help him. But the center does uh, a great job of understanding how to prioritize critical needs in research, help identify funding, sometimes even provide funding for those projects, and connect the uh, results of research to the public and to the important conversation that goes on with the public, but also with decision makers, uh, with, with legislators. Uh, so this year we had some progress in the legislature related to water quality. Uh, there was a lot of conversation about what needed to be done and how it should be done and, and uh, what bill should be passed versus another bill. Uh, but in the end, uh, we did have a bill passed that was signed by the governor uh, to redirect $282 million over the next 12 years for water quality initiatives. I think everybody was pleased to have a first step, but everybody recognizes that much more will be needed to get us where we need to be in terms of addressing the big issues of water uh, in Iowa. But a good start uh, from the state legislature in a year that has been fraught with all sorts of uh, budget, budgetary issues as the state is faced with increasing uh, obligations uh, to fund. So, so we have a good start from the state legislature. Well, at Iowa State University, I just want to restate one more time that water quality is going to continue uh, to be a priority for us. 
uh, when we had the opportunity uh, to set in a restaurant with Bill Northey and Mike Nag so many years ago and lay out a plan on how we were going to put together a science team, a science team led by John Lawrence, a science team that included not just Iowa State faculty and staff, but individuals from many of the agencies that I mentioned earlier, uh, to sit down and really make a plan. And that plan became uh, part of what our future is, and that's the nutrient reduction strategy. So the science is going to keep evolving. The science is going to continue to bring us innovation. The science is going to lead to individuals being entrepreneurial about how they can do new practices on the land to achieve the outcome that are necessary. So we are all in on what we need to be doing in water, and we have great leadership on campus uh, to be working with so many different partners that we have here. So I guess I would just say I uh, appreciate so much your participate, participation in today's conference. To see you all here, many of you have been here probably at every conference uh, that we've had. Uh, how many of you have, have, have been at a Iowa Water Conference before? Yeah, isn't that great? So a round of applause for all of you. And I'll end by saying that I'll be on the phone today, uh, later this evening, with Dr. Jerry Miller. Uh, he was one of the key individuals that helped start this process. And I'll tell him that you all send him uh, your thoughts and good wishes. And he'll be pleased to see so many of you are still participating. So have a great conference. Thank you again for being focused on such an important issue. Welcome. Thank you very much, President Winterstein. Winterstein. <laughs> I feel humbled by her comments, absolutely. Uh, and I do uh, want to pass on that recognition to two people who, without them, we would have a very, very different picture of a conference, and that is Melissa Miller and Hannah Bates. Are you both in here? Yes, yes, please. They also have a cast of many that have assisted, and I, I deeply appreciate that as well.